Welcome back to my garage. Yesterday I did the rest of the tapping and drilling and all that small stuff and uh, we're pretty much ready for assembly except for one thing. We need to measure this bore for the seal because I have a suspicion it's too tight. The tolerances for a 30 millimeter seal is uh, are uh, I think from zero to 0 0.033 millimeters over and I think this is too, it's really tight and these cases weren't machined by me and I never checked that bore a long time ago and uh, probably a worn tool so um, we're gonna check it I'm pretty sure it's too tight a little recap to get people on board here I haven't got time to explain everything you really have to go back many years and watch my videos but this also, so I'm creating the most powerful two-stroke ever. That's the that's my goal, and this started uh, many years ago when I was uh, playing with my the, that old engine I'm always talking about. And I can't show you the old engine because it's sitting in my land speed bike in Arkansas, and all the spare parts and stuff are there for uh, for our Bonneville attempt. <laughs> That old engine has a ported EAM 50cc cylinder. I ported it. Produces about 18 horsepower to the wheel on this dyno through a variator. So probably like 23 horsepower at the crank or something like that. Thing is I had a choice when I got to that point with that cylinder. The choice was either to keep on porting and uh, pretty much just uh, copying what I knew worked. Like an Aprilia RSA cylinder in miniature. Or go somewhere else, and that's what's interesting to me to go another path, not uh, not your normal path. And this all started. So I started designing my own cylinder, and uh, I cast. This is one of the castings. This is actually a metal 3D printed one, but uh, same geometry, and uh, with lots of ideas for things to be improved, like these. Uh, really huge transfers and uh, and actually the angles are wrong and uh, I went years with the wrong angles these were never meant to be this steep they were meant to be like this but uh, you kind of get blind and uh, this was the castings were made by 3d printing cylinders in PLA and then uh, engulfing them in plaster burning out the PLA and then pouring the aluminium there's videos. At that point the cylinder had a 100% of bore unbridged exhaust port. This one has that unbridged exhaust port. And was meant to be run with these special pistons. With a captive uh, captive piston ring. There's a hole there. There's a pin sitting in that hole. And having uh, letting the ring expand just enough but not enough to, to snag in the port. That's the theory. And there's multiple uh, iterations of this with ledges and stuff. This idea is not dead, but uh, during the years, and when pretty much a year ago now, I, I suddenly came to my senses and uh, after uh, lots of peer pressure <laughs> and, uh, and decided to actually start doing things like one thing at a time. Because this was with a 100% of bore exhaust port, experimental piston design, like a two-piece piston. Actually three-piece in this, uh, this case. And... Uh, Tweak transfer geometry, resonance intake without the valve, all that stuff, huge crankcase volume to, to benefit the resonance intake and, and all that stuff at the same time. And an experimental dyno. So, um, so that's why we're working. Now, now the plan was just to like take the easy route, get the crankcase volume down to acceptable levels for a rotary valve. It's too hard to, or like, there's actually, because the long stroke and the huge transfers, it's really hard to get it down to acceptable levels for a reed valve, for a reed valve. So that's why I'm not using a reed valve. Rotary valve, and uh, my old engine is rotary valve and uh, never had any trouble with the rotary valve. But now, as you've seen, we've experienced lot, uh, lots of trouble with the rotary valve. But I'm not working with the rotary valve because I think that's the way forward and this is magically gonna make this the most powerful two-stroke ever. It's just because it's what's closest to that resonance intake. Which there's, I have my doubts about the resonance intake too when thinking about it. Something with the, uh, with the asymmetrical transfers and how the pulses would move and stuff like that. But that's not for now. For now, 
we're just trying to make something normal work. And uh, apparently I'm really bad at making something worm normal work, wormal, <laughs> normal work these days. But that's what we're doing and uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Forgot to mention my little detour into the brute force concept, uh, exhaust valve, the two stroke concept with the blower. <laughs> Then I also ran this with a blower for a little while and a blown engine is not, that's, that idea is not dead either. But uh, focus now, make something completely normal work and then build on that and, um, and leave that the free jazz approach uh, for a little while until I can't bear it anymore. <laughs> okay. I haven't got a tap for whatever thread this is and uh, I can't find anything locally which means it would be a few days before I could uh, get something. I bored the hole a little bit undersized and I'm gonna attempt to uh, to use this brass fitting to thread the aluminium which might not work because the brass isn't that hard but uh, and then I'm gonna JB weld it in and if we need to remove it we can uh, heat it up so the JB weld breaks up and then uh, unthread it. So I'll tap it with this first and then I'll apply the JB weld and, uh, and thread it in. And we should have some really nice tight threads. And yet again I didn't press record, I'm not sure what I got on camera there, but I uh, first self-threaded this into the hole and then unscrewed it and then JB welded it in place. I'll use the angle grinder and cut away the excess under here because that'll uh, interfere with the engine mount. Deformed by uh, the heat here. I'll quickly drill that hole all the way through first before we start assembling. Thank <laughs> you. 
Point four barely wants to sneak in there. So we're uh, we're in spec. We deleted the seal in this side because I don't think it's necessary with a rotary valve. But this side still has a seal. And uh, as we're, we're uh, concerned about uh, friction now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check this and see, and see how big that hole actually is. Because it's really tight. Like it's a really, I really have to hammer the seals in here. Twenty nine point nine. I'll take a couple more measurements. Twenty nine point nine nine one. It's a little oval. It's within spec in this direction, and not in this, which is a good thing because I can just take a skim cut and uh, and true this up. Pretty much spot on from what I can see now. A little bit bigger in this, this dimension still, but that is, that's because it was bigger in that dimension. And I can see how the tool didn't clean up that area. There's actually a dip there, so the surface was touched all the way around except for a spot here. Which is uh, about uh, 0 0.03 millimeters larger. So with intolerance for that seal now. Almost forgot this primary intake uh, place taker stuffer. This engine was meant to run with a well, second primary, primary read intake, and then that resonance intake would take over. So that was the original experimental plan. And the primary intake had, a, or the secondary, whatever you want to call it, had a fuel injection. Continuous uh, fuel injection for, or constant flow, uh, for working with an electronically controlled variator, and uh, staying at... Uh, Staying at the same RPM all the time and under the same load. The new rotary valve cover will interfere with uh, this. So I'll have to grind this uh, flat, leave five millimeters of surface here.
That's a much nicer fit than uh, earlier. Perfect. There's so much friction introduced by by a seal compared to without them. So uh, I think deleting the other one is a good idea. As long as it works without a seal there. We'll see. As you've seen before, I'm using this 3D printed uh, template thing to set timing. Both rotary valve and ignition timing. To seat the taper. That's enough. That's pretty much spot on. Sitting at 3.17. And the crank is spinning this direction. Now the end of the lobe should be centered over the, over the trigger. So you can see, you might see the end of the lobe is, uh, is centered over the trigger. So it's in the correct position now. I'm gonna apply a thin layer of this uh, Wirt engine sealer because it's less messy than the, that other stuff and it also cleans up much easier. It has to sit for 5-10 uh, minutes before uh, to, uh, to off gas before you assemble so that's what I'm gonna do now. I'll let that sit for 10 minutes off gassing. Done. That's it for this video, which I should get out Wednesday, tomorrow. And then Friday, we'll put this into the frame and uh, first start up and test. And hopefully this time it works as intended. See you next time.